As a software engineer, nothing is worse than a broken build preventing you from shipping. In this video, I'm going to show you two examples demonstrating how you can identify, prioritize, and fix disruptive Gradle and Maven build failures using Gradle Enterprise, a comprehensive solution for addressing your developer productivity challenges. Hi, I'm Eric Wendelin, Analytics Lead Engineer for Gradle. In our first example, we're going to use a data-driven approach to identify and fix unexpected build failures in our deployment CI jobs. First, we need to collect build scans, which record what happened in each build. We'll start by applying the Gradle Enterprise extension to our build. Next, we configure the extension to send build scans to our self-hosted Gradle Enterprise server using a Gradle Enterprise XML configuration file. With this setup, our Gradle Enterprise server collects build scans for all local NCI builds of our project. Let's visit it in a browser to see our build data. Gradle Enterprise provides various trends and analytics on your builds, but today we're going to explore build failures, so we'll choose Failures in the navigation bar. This failure dashboard allows you to monitor disruptive build failures. At the top, you can see the overall trend, with the most frequent failure types listed below. There are effectively two categories of build failures, those that relate to verification, such as compilation or test errors, and those that relate to build configuration or infrastructure problems, which break development cycles. Gradle Enterprise categorizes failures in this manner to isolate the non-verification failures for easier analysis. But you can also analyze verification failures, which are usually an expected part of software development. Debugging tricky failures sometimes benefits greatly from looking at previous failures and trends. Let's look at the most common non-verification failures and consider whether any of them require attention. First, we want to filter builds to the ones we care about. In this case, CI builds for our project on the stable branch. The charts update after we click refresh. The overall trend chart indicates that there were 13 builds with non-verification failures today. Next, we look at the top failures listed by occurrence count. The top two failure types comprise the vast majority of non-verification failures. The top failure in particular looks like it needs attention. The trend chart for this failure indicates that it has occurred frequently on several days in the past week. If you look closely, you can see that portions of the failure type are replaced with stars. Here's why. Gradle Enterprise analyzes build failures and groups similar ones, then it distills these groups into failure message patterns that match only and exactly the failures in each group. Pretty neat, huh? Okay, let's drill down to see what's causing this failure to happen so often. Now we see the failure type at the top, breakdown charts, and a list of most recent matching build failures below. This failure type says that a command execution failed in the exec maven plugin. The wildcard stars tell us that command execution is failing with multiple versions of the plugin with multiple different executables. You can modify the failure pattern to match precisely the types of build failures you want. For example, let's say we're only interested in failures with the latest version of the mojo. We can replace the star with the exact mojo version, and then the view is updated when we click refine. The daily trend chart shows the occurrence rate for the past week. A glance at the user and host breakdown charts tells us that this affects only one user and host, so we're able to quickly isolate the problem to a single CI instance. The top tags chart shows CI, Linux, and Stage 5 are present on 100% of builds encountering this failure. So now we can infer that the affected CI instance runs on Linux in Stage 5 of our CI pipeline. Let's expand the time range to see how long this has been happening. After updating, the trend chart indicates that this failure has not only been occurring for the past several days, but it has also occurred a few weeks ago. It looks like this problem was previously fixed and a regression occurred eight days ago. The host breakdown chart shows that this affects two CI hosts, which tells us that a different CI host encountered this problem a few weeks ago. CI, Linux, and Stage 5 still dominate the top tags, so the problem seems to be isolated to this environment. Now let's look at the most recent failed build to go deeper. This build scan has data about the build environment, dependencies, and logs that will help us identify the root cause. The failure view shows the exception details with a message and a stack trace summary containing stack frames most relevant to this build. The exception message says that the npm command execution failed. From the stack trace, we can also observe that our custom Node.js mojo is in the call chain. Perhaps the console logs will tell us more. We can filter the log lines to those produced by the exec goal we're interested in. 
The logs tell us that execution failed because the node binary could not be found. Perhaps something is wrong with the build host. We can find details about the build environment in the infrastructure section of the build scan. Now looking at the infrastructure, one thing is surprising. The build agent has only two CPU cores. That's unusual for our CI cluster. Usually our build boxes have 16 cores or more. Now we should contact the infrastructure team and send them a link to the failure analysis and the build scan to give them context when we ask what's going on. It turns out that this agent shouldn't be running deployment jobs. Agents are being assigned to the wrong CI pool. The trend data proved that there was a regression, which justifies doing extra work to make sure this problem doesn't happen again. After the CI agent has moved out of the deployment pool, we check back later. According to the trend chart, the failure has stopped occurring, confirming the fix. We can use the failure dashboard to monitor regressions in the future. This is how you can use a data-driven approach to identify unexpected build failures, prioritize the most frequently occurring ones, and then use build data to investigate and fix. Now I'm going to show you a second example, demonstrating how a developer encountering a build failure can use Gradle Enterprise to assess and fix it. Here is a Gradle build that encountered a dependency resolution error. We haven't modified the build dependencies, so a dependency resolution error is unexpected. Because we've configured the Gradle Enterprise plugin to generate a build scan for every build, we can use the link to investigate the failure in detail. The view indicates that there were 115 similar failures in the last two hours. That's a surprise. This isn't just happening to us. Let's see who else is suffering from this problem. The link took us to a failure analysis view visualizing similar dependency resolution failures. According to the trend chart, we see that those 116 failures have happened today. Through the breakdown charts, we can see that this problem affects a large number of users and hosts, including local and CI builds. Because this incident is widespread and failing a large number of builds, we should fix it right away. Let's go back to our build details. Now we should explore dependency resolution using the dependencies view. We can view details of the dependency failure using this handy link in the header. Now we can click the dependency identifier, and we learn that this is a transitive dependency defined in the test runtime class path configuration, and that it is also declared with a dynamic dependency version. We can inspect the dependency repositories by clicking the link in the header. Here we see that we are using JCenter and an internal Maven repo to resolve artifacts. We would expect the library to be in our internal repo. Now let's explore the network activity in this build to find out why the dependency request failed. According to the network activity view, the POM file was retrieved successfully, but the JAR file was not found. It looks like publication of the library partially failed, which is causing many builds to fail as a result. Removing the POM file and adjusting the artifact metadata fixes the build, and we can prove it using the failure dashboard. We see that the failure is no longer occurring in any build environment. Furthermore, we now are able to use trend analysis to short circuit a future investigation if it happens again. I hope you can see now how to take a data-driven approach with Gradle Enterprise to identify common build failures, assess their impact, and fix the most damaging problems so your developer team can focus on shipping. Now, if you liked this video, I suggest you check out the test failure analytics video in which we identify and fix flaky tests. There's much more to Gradle Enterprise though. You can learn about tools which make software builds much faster as well as more reliable in the demo video. Or you can simply try Gradle Enterprise analytics and let the data speak for itself. Just click the link below. Thanks for watching.